A John here. Here's liquid day number 111. As usual, I'm just going to play it slowly once and then break it down. We start here on the 13th fret of the high E string. So this one is very much inspired by Paul Gilbert's playing in the Racer X era. And being that, it's going to involve a lot of alternate picking and also a lot of groups of six. Uh, so six tuplets. So we start here on the 13th fret. We're using the A harmonic minor scale. We're going to go down 13, 12, 10 on both the high E and the B string. Starting with a downstroke. Strictly alternate picked. Uh, and we're going to shift down to the natural 7th here, that's what makes the whole thing a harmonic minor scale as opposed to a natural minor scale. So we're going to go up 9, 10, 12 on the B string and then 8, 10, 12 on the E string. Then we're going to combine those two like this. And we're going to repeat that twice. And then we're going to go down these six notes in octaves. So we have, and we just need to find the F note here, one octave down, and then you do exactly the same shape. And then you repeat that again from the F on the A string. And then we land on the natural seventh again. Uh, so. And from here, um, we're basically on the third of the five chord here. So if A minor is the one chord, then this is the five chord, E major with G sharp in the bass. And then we just release that to E, open E, and then I slide up to the 20th fret of the B string and bend up to the root. And actually, this is more of an Yngwie thing, I think, than, than Paul Gilbert. But I, I love that slidey, bendy sound. So the actual technique here is that I just start the... I pick... I don't pick when I come up here. I basically start picking here. And I re-pick the note as I've bent it, so... Alright, let's put it all together again. Practice wise here, this in itself is a great picking exercise, but what you can do if you have trouble with it is to extend the repetitions here. So you can just sit here for literally 10, 20 minutes at a time if you want, as long as you feel uh, you're relaxed and you don't feel pain anywhere. Uh, so you, you have to be the judge of that, of course, but a lot of repetitions here are really good. And make sure those repeti repetitions are perfect. Uh, so, whatever you feel that this should sound like at a faster tempo, that's the standard you're going for when you practice this. So. Next thing you can do is just to move it down. go that far. You can also do this with the, the mechanical practice that I like to do. So you just take the, the fingerings again for three notes per string. It will be one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four. And then you just go down in one position here. So you go down with one, two, three first. Then one, two, four. One, three, four. Two, three, four. It's a really good way to get used to uh, going across all six strings. So, and I think it's a good idea to keep this big string skip as well. Uh, another variation you can do that's really effective is to 
basically go down one group of six at a time. So you go one, two, basically the first string group. Do that again, but now you go as far as the D string. So you do two string groups. And then you do all six strings. So if you put that together, and do that with all fingerings, obviously, and then move it up and down the fretboard. So if you do that in each position here, that's a really good workout for getting used to those descending scales. And a really good way to work on that as well is to focus on the left hand, because that's where the problem is. Uh, so a lot of people think that they have a right hand problem with picked lines, but a lot of the time it's the left hand that cannot do it in time, uh, and especially for these descending kind of runs. So one thing that you can do is just to, and I'm muting the strings here so just, you don't have to think about the muting, and we're going to do all hammers here. So. And you see, if you don't get it right, the note won't sound. So you kind of have to be really careful with your uh, timing here. So. And focus on the timing. Don't, don't go try to over, uh, overcompensate by uh, smacking the, the strings. Instead, really focus on the timing. And it should really be no difference from, if I do this, for example, um, So you see, it's no difference in the, in the movement, in the left hand, whether I'm picking it or if I do these all hammers. And obviously doing all hammers is actually more difficult, I'd say. But it's a really good practice to make sure that your left hand is actually capable of doing the thing that it needs to do to synchronize with the right hand. Uh, because if you think about it, doing this, one string isn't that difficult so a lot of the difficulty people have with synchronization is bound to come from the left hand not always but most of the time that's where the, the problem area lies so by working on these all hammer type exercises that will help your alternate picking greatly but it will also help your legato so um, give that a try all right that's it for this one if you have any questions just post them below otherwise i hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one